Hey besties, what's up? My name is Mackenzie and welcome to my channel and welcome to the start of a new reading vlog. So today is the second. Happy late New Year's, I guess. I was going to start my vlog yesterday and I never ended up doing it and now I'm kind of regretting it because my throat is literally killing me. I think Steven and I have faked sick too many times and now I'm sick, so <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I feel worse than I did yesterday, so... I've been chugging the vitamin C and I'm also trying to upload my video for Thursday. I am this close to like losing it. I'm having a rough time. So essentially I had to delete like a full clip. It wasn't important to the vlog, I guess, technically speaking, but I did want to keep it in, but the editing gods just won't allow it. So I took that out and this is my fourth time trying to upload it. And I'm about to the point where I'm going to upload half of it. And then upload the other half because it seems to hopefully it was only that small bit that was having issues because if it comes up with another error seeing that there are more places i don't know what i'm gonna do my camera's been having a rough time hopefully in the last vlog that you guys saw you won't have seen too many but there were a ton of screen glitches for some reason and i don't know if that's from my lens i don't know if my lens is broken I don't know if Diablo knocking it down onto the ground broke it. it. It probably did. So yeah, it's just rough. I'm hoping that it doesn't ruin the quality of my videos because I did not spend this much money on a stinking camera just for it to break, not even a year later. My reading plans for this week. I don't know if I'm going to do bi-weekly vlogs or weekly vlogs. In my last video I talked about, or my last vlog I guess, talked about how I wanted to do it bi-weekly however um I know that it's like almost a whole another week but I have 20 I had 20 days basically worth of footage to edit and it was three hours <laughs> so I was able to whittle it down to an hour and 50 but it's still a lot so we'll have to see what I decide to do but I started Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets yesterday, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm 26 pages in. Um, I had to stop. I literally stopped a page after the chapter stopped. It's, it's fine. But I am really liking it so far. Definitely has been a lot quicker to get into this book than the first book. And hopefully that's how it will continue to go. And then last night before I went to bed, I started A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. And I don't even think I'm 10% into it, and it's already almost made me cry, like, three times. If you don't know, A Court of Silver Flames is the fifth book in the Akatar series, and, yeah, I'm really liking it so far. It follows Nesta, and I am very interested to see where we go in this book, because, surprisingly, I haven't been spoiled for it yet. I would think with how long it's been out, I mean, it's been out for, like, two, three years, it's been out for three years I think at this point and I haven't been spoiled for it so don't spoil it for me in the comments. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it by the time this vlog goes out but I do need to catch up on that and then I need to ha read House of Sky and Breath so I'm thinking that maybe I need to pick up my pace a little bit more especially where those both of those books are huge. I thought I had a copy of a Court of Silver Flames in my bedroom, but I literally have no clue where it is. I need to clean my room. We did a lot of cleaning yesterday. Wrong in the new year cleaning. <laughs> and that was good. I'm glad that we did. But the problem is we always start in the same end of our house. And by the time we get done with like our living room and stuff, we're burnt out and we never get to the bathroom or the bedroom. Which granted, the bathroom isn't that bad, so... It probably would only take 10 minutes to clean. Um, it's the bedroom. Like, it's a struggle. So, and then we also didn't get to vacuum yesterday because all of our clean clothes were on the floor because we had been folding laundry yesterday too. So, ugh, need to get that done. Other than that, I think that's all I have to talk to you guys about at the start of this vlog. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. And my voice is getting scratchy. I don't feel very good, so we're going to keep trucking along. I am currently watching Becca's video that she just uploaded today, so I'm going to go and finish watching that. 
I cannot tell you guys how much I do not want to go to work today. This is the only time you're going to hear about it. I hope. Because I talked about work a lot in my last video and all it did was ruin my mood. So when I was editing the video, I will talk to you guys in just a little bit with hopefully some more reading updates. I'm hoping to maybe read some today. I don't know. All I want to do is go back to sleep. But I know Steven is going to come home from lunch, or for lunch soon, I mean. And at that point, there's no point in taking a nap. But we've been going to bed super late, and ugh, it's rough. Anyways, talk to you guys in a little bit. I look so goofy. It's okay. Okay, hi besties, what's up? I'm sorry, it is a few days later. Um, I'm not going to lie. Work has been kicking my butt. <laughs> This week, like, it has been so rough. Working in a pharmacy at the beginning of the year is its own kind of hell. <laughs> uh, not that working in a pharmacy isn't its own kind of hell, but it doesn't matter. So, um, it's been a rough week, and if you guys can hear, I'm, like, congested. Um, and my throat is super dry, so... I'm sorry. Um, Jeez, I look freaking ridiculous. It's okay. You know what? I'm comfy and cozy. And I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to go back to sleep after I update the vlog. Um, I feel bad. This is the first vlog of the year. And I'm slacking a little bit. But that's okay. So, um, I feel fine for the most part. But I am so congested. And this is the worst congestion day I've had. Um... So that's fine. And I can't take any cold medicine. I wish I could. But, um, nothing that's really gonna work for me. So, that's cool. Anyways, so, I have an update for you guys, though. I finished a book yesterday. So, I wanted to talk about it. So, I finished Double the D by, uh, Evie Mitchell. That, that title is funny. Okay. So, if you don't know, Double the D is a very, very short story, like, um, 63 pages short, and first of all, I just want to say, like, I'm glad I'm not reading books, because I don't even know how I would rate this, because honestly, I kind of thought I was just reading a sample at first, because I've been downloading samples of books on my Kindle app, so that I can remember that I want to read them, and so that I can give them a chance, but to, like, save money obviously. And I, yeah, so I guess I, I did buy the full ebook. But if you don't know, Double the D follows Blue, who's our main girl character, and then Drake and Dane. And they all kind of have a past together from when they were like 17, 18, 16, stuff like that. Don't worry, nothing like Uli will happen or anything. Nothing Uli will happen. You know, nothing illegal happened. Um, but Evie hasn't seen the two boys since they basically moved out of her house and went to go train at the army. And one day they come back into town where they've just bought a house and they run into Evie at the grocery store and it's the guy's mission to get her back um, so that they can be like the throuple they've always wanted to be. So first, I'm going to say this with my full chest, knowing that I'm wrong for this because I didn't realize it was only 63 pages when I picked it up originally. Because I, yeah, I have like a couple other books on my Kindle from her and they're all full length novels. So I didn't even realize, I, th I think they're all full length novels. One second, let me just uh, fact check myself right now <laughs> because I would hate to be wrong. But um, the original reason I wanted to get into her books was because of um, Tie the Knot. I'll put a picture right here. Oh, oh, okay, that's 141. That's a lot better than 63. Oh my gosh. Every book in this series seems to be like in between 90 and um, 1,700. No, just kidding, 134 pages. I like how it shows the location on the Kindle, and it's like a ridiculous number. It's funny. Um, but the original reason I've been so interested in Evie Mitchell's work is because of Tie the Knot. And that's a full-length novel. It seems like all of her other novels are, like, short, spicy novellas, which is fine. And now that I know that, I can have more realistic expectations. But I think my problem is 
that there was like no pining. There was no pining. Like, we maybe saw a little bit of pining from the guy's side, but like, there wasn't any pining. And, um, I think I just need pining to be there. I need, like, and again, I'm wrong for this. I'm wrong for this opinion. And, and I'm aware of that because it's, it's literally 63 pages. And like I said, I, if I would have known that going in, you know, that was my fault. That was my fault. And I'm aware of that. But I just need a little bit more pining. And I think if it were like 20 pages longer, um, it would have been a lot better. Like, I think I would have liked it a lot more. There's also like a taboo element a little bit because, um, the boys were like a pair of like foster brothers that went around from like house to house and they were in Blue's house at one point and obviously they were the guys were like charading his brothers and that's fine like you know what honestly it's fine but my question is Blue has had multiple like foster siblings and it is stated that she's never felt this way about any of them which like I hope I hope not I hope not but like I just have questions like yeah. I don't know. They came and fostered at her house at an older age, and I don't know how long they were actually there for. I don't believe it's said in the novel, but yeah. anyways, it doesn't matter. That's neither here nor there. Um, so yeah. I liked it well enough. Like, it was fine. It was a good fun time. Um, I also got New Year, New You by her, so I think I want to read that, or it's the New Year, and it's a little bit longer, so I think it'll be a little bit better. And I also started Years Between Us by Miranda, uh, Miranda, Melanie. Ha, look at that. All I needed was her last name. Um, it's a tic she's a TikTok creator that I follow and she's releasing her first book. This is actually an arc. It comes out January 12th, I believe, and I wanted to read it. I'm liking it so far. I think I just need to get more into the meat of the story because I'm literally 20 pages in. So, I'm going to continue reading that. I need to get back into Harry Potter this weekend. Um, hopefully, I can, like, lay in bed and relax and read. Um, I don't know how hopeful I am about that, but we'll see. <laughs> Dude, I feel like crap. I'm literally probably going to finish watching Katie's video today and go back to sleep for a couple hours before I have to go to work because this is just, yeah, it's not working out for me very well. At least next week I have like pretty much all earlier shifts, which is great. But it is freaking rough as hell <laughs> this week. I'm not even like, I'm not even gonna lie. So, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna finish watching Katie's vlog. Um, I've also decided, I don't know if I talked to you guys about starting A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. I'm doing a whole different video for that, so if you're interested, keep your eyes peeled. I'm doing a Sarah J. Mass catch-up vlog, basically, with that and House of Sky and Breath. So I'm very excited for that video. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but other than that, I am going to go and go back to bed because besides being sick, I just have not been sleeping well. So that's wonderful for me. Hopefully, I can cake this because uh, I literally feel so gross. So, yeah, with all that being said, I will talk to you guys in a little bit with hopefully some more reading updates and hopefully I am less sick. Cat. This was not what I came here to show you or tell you, but look, got a cat. And he does love me. Even though he just ran away. He's hoping to snatch some of that ice cream that I had. Even though I already put it away. I'm sorry. I am still congested with this cold from hell. Literally. Like, everybody at work is sick. Steven is sick. I'm sick. It's just everybody. But that's totally fine. So, I don't remember when the last time I talked to you guys was. But it is now Monday the next week. So, it's probably been a while. Yeah, it's just been... It's been a rough one. But I have finished, like, four things since we last spoke. Um, don't be too impressed with me. They're all short stories. Like, they're all, like, novellas. But 
I just want to like rapid fire go over them with you. So they're all part of the Capricorn Cove series by Evie Mitchell. Double the D was the second book in that series of 11 books. So after I read the second one, I was thinking, okay, how about this? What if I try a novella that's like set during one day? Which I actually don't think any of this author's novellas are set over one day. I could be wrong. Or I've only read like five of them. I'm probably wrong, but... Alright, sorry. If my nose looks significantly more red. It is because I just blew it. <laughs> so I'm, I apologize. So, anyways. I thought maybe I want to try one of this author's works. It's like maybe over a day span. Instead of like, I don't know. I don't know. So I chose New Year, New You because obviously it's a new year. I thought it was fitting. So I chose that one. And okay, not to spoil anything, but I think it is probably my favorite book that I've read so far. So that is book number five. So I skipped from book two to book five. Um, I will say, even though they're like interconnected standalones, I would say to read them in order. There aren't very many books that I guess I would like interconnected standalone series that I would recommend doing that with but all of these books are very very heavily intertwined like it's not like an easter egg here seeing a couple there like they're all really well like interconnected so in new year new you you follow Cal and Emily and this is another reason you see Emily's character in the two books previous to this and she is a much different person, especially in book three, but I guess we'll get there. So, Emily and Cal's marriage at the beginning of this book was on the edge, on the rocks. Basically, they had been married for five years, together for longer than that, and unfortunately, Emily made some life changes and changed herself um, so much that she just wasn't the same person that Cal fell in love with. So... The beginning of the book, their marriage is basically disintegrating. However, Emily doesn't know this because she actually just woke up from a coma that she's been in for a few days. And she doesn't remember the past five years at all. She doesn't remember getting engaged or married. Um, she doesn't recognize that Cal's um, facial hair when he comes in to visit her. And yeah, so we have all that. And she doesn't remember other life events. So it's about... Cal coming to terms with the fact that basically he gets to start over his whole marriage and see if maybe he can hopefully help her not fall back into the ways that got her and him into this position in their relationship. And it was so good. It was so good. Like, it was really good. I really, really enjoyed it. I definitely would like to warn you guys. Um, there are typos in this book. So just be warned of that. Like, there are typos in probably all of them. I've been reading them so fast that I hadn't really noticed until I, like, read a review. So just be aware of that. And, like, unfortunately, they aren't in KU. Else I probably would be reading them faster. But I need to, like, pace myself for a minute. But, yeah, anyways, I really like that. That one is my favorite so far that I've read. So then I jumped back to book one. Because I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to read this whole series. So I'm just going to go back to book one. So the next book that we have to talk about is The Shake Up. And that is the first book. So in this book, we are following Anika and Mac. And one day after some particularly rough news, Anika decides to go and get herself a one night stand. And she meets this rugged guy named Mac. And they end up having like a really great night together. And when he gets in the shower, she basically orders him breakfast to his hotel room and leaves. And she never thinks she's gonna see him again. However, he is actually moving to Capricorn Cove because of a job that he's doing with his friends. So he is looking for a place to stay that's not with his friends who were just recently either married or engaged that are, you know, going through their honeymoon phase right now. In enters Anika again. She is looking for a roommate to help with some financial strife that she unwillingly got put into um, by one of her family members. And so they become like roommates, it's forced proximity, it's, it's good. 
it's pretty good. Then we have Muffin Top, which is the third book, and that book follows Honey and Tristan. And Honey is kind of having a rough go about life right now. She has a really rough and rocky relationship with her parents um, because she doesn't fit into their perfect mold that they want her to be. And she's struggling with that. And she's also Cal's sister. So we get to see a lot of Cal in this book. Well, not a lot, but we get to see him. And one night on our way home from a Halloween party, someone rams right into the back of her as she is at a stop sign, and it's basically a hit and run. So that's when Tristan comes. He is actually a local sheriff, and he takes, um, he makes sure she's okay. He takes down some information from her, and they both actually had mega crushes on each other in high school and they were both kind of too scared to tell each other. I will say I, I did really like this one too. A lot of these books are like big beautiful woman romance books which is fine. Like that, There's nothing wrong with that like um, I do want to say sometimes it is just heavy-handed on reminding us that they have thick thighs and stuff which is like not a big thing but like it seems like a lot of the characters in these books think about it all the time. Like, but anyways, yeah, they just rekindle their relationship from there. And it's, it's good. I did like that one. Um, I will rank all these after we're done because I have thought about this. Like, I have thought about it. So then the one that I finished this morning because I've been a lean, mean reading machine, besties, is the Mrs. Claus. I will say all of them, but... Um, but New Year, New You is, are literally under 100 pages. I will say the longer they are, the more I like them. Um, I do kind of wish we had more time with, like, not necessarily the characters, because obviously we get time with the characters, but, um, more time with the couples, because I don't, the pining, it's the pining that I'm missing, and unless it's like a second chance romance kind of thing, where I can be like, okay, you know, they had a relationship prior to this, it's hard. It's hard. Anyways, let's talk about the Mrs. Claus. So, we follow Collins and Nick. Collins is actually Emily's little sister. So, yeah, it's it's all connected. But anyways, so Collins and Nick have been in love since they were kids. However, um, there was an arranged marriage, and unfortunately, due to some circumstances, Collins thinks that Nick isn't in love with her anymore and she has left and at the beginning of the book we find out that um because of basically the prenuptial agreement that they both agreed upon there can't be a divorce so she thinks that rather than being lonely and all by herself she wants to go and give Nick this ultimatum where either he's a sperm donor or she goes to a sperm donor or gets like a surrogate or whatever and she has a baby because she wants something to take care of and to love. And Nick basically says, like, no, if you're having a baby, we're, ha we're doing it the old-fashioned way. You and me in a bed. And so it's them working through all their marriage strife. Because um, they've been married for qu quite a while. And she basically walked out of their house one day. And I will say, I really like this one too. I like Collins as a character a lot. I am glad that I've gotten to see more. Um, this is the fourth book. Yeah, it's the fourth book. So I liked, yeah, I just, I liked seeing Collins again since I read the fifth book before this one, but it was great. So um, my ranking, I guess, should we go from like what I like the most to the least? Granted, none of these, if I was still writing books, would be under three stars. None of them would be under three stars. Um, I think <laughs> some of them would be right on three stars, but it'd be fine. So, Double the D, I feel like it's like my least favorite. Um, still really liked it. I just, I needed more from the characters. I, I just needed more. That's just, that's just how it is. And then Muffin Top. Again, I really liked it. There was nothing in particular that I didn't like, that I disliked about the book. I just, again, with the wanting more, um, I just want pining. And so maybe her books aren't for me necessarily, but 
I do really like how fast they are to read and they're literally addictive. They're literally addictive. I mean, well, I've read five of them since the new year and I know it's the seventh, but yeah, it's, it's been a lot. So we have that one and we have the shake up. I, I really like this one. I really liked it. I will say that it's one of those ones that the spicy talk, it's a little weird, but it's, it's not that big of a deal to be honest. It wasn't that big of a deal. So then we have the Mrs. Claus and I really, I really liked that one. That was the one I finished today. I just, I loved it. It was, it was really good. Um, and then obviously my top favorite being new year, new you. I, yeah, I just really liked that one. That one was, is definitely my favorite that I've read in the series so far. And luckily my two favorites are in the same bind up. Um, uh, the author only sells the paperbacks through her website. So if you're interested in any of the paperbacks, I will link them down below. They are all, um, at least in the Capricorn Co. series, there are two books per, like, bind up, I guess. So, yeah. Even though I wish I could get, like, books separately, which is what I would do, I would, I would probably like to get the whole series eventually, but... Each book is like $25 and right now I'm, I'm not, I'm just not going to do that, but, um, I definitely could see myself buying my favorites. Not right now though. I don't need them right now. Just eventually. But it's definitely something I want to reread at least like The Mrs. Claus and, um, New Year, New You. I really want to annotate those. I will say to, um, there are some of these books that have like two epilogues essentially, so there's one like a couple years down the road and then one even more down the road, I guess. And I did, I do kind of like that. I also, it's just, it's really a mixed bag, honestly. Like, I would almost rather have like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'd rather have. Um, but I do really like them. So I'm excited to continue on reading Evie Mitchell, but I really need to take a chill pill. With that I do have a few more of her books on my Kindle so I will have to look at that like I'm a lean mean Kindle reading machine though like when I say that I'm so surprised that I've read I know technically speaking to a lot of people it's probably not that much but if I do some quick math which I will be doing just give me one second it's all making sense because a lot of my favorite ones the ones that are in the top spots are like the bigger ones Oh, New Year, New You was actually eight, only 80 pages. I don't know why I thought it was more than that. So in the past few days that I've been reading them, I've read a total of 427 pages altogether with all five books. And Now listen, I know that that's not a lot, and I'm not doing this to, like, jumpstart my good read school, even though that's a smart idea. <laughs> I'm literally doing them because I can't stop. I literally can't stop. Um, but I need to hold off for a little bit. So I'm doing that for now. We're just going to hold off. Um, I have to tie the knot, which is like a full length novel by her. So I'm excited to read that. And then I have three books and like, there's a s series of five books. Um, I can't remember what it's called right now, but let me see. That are also short stories, the Larson sibling series. So I have three books out of five in that one too. So I have four other things that I could read from Evie right now. Um, three of them are still short stories, but Tie the Knot is a full length novel. I will. I just. I wish all of them were full length novels. I really do. I. I think I'd like them all like a little bit more, even if they only hit like the hundred fifty page mark. I feel like a lot of these needed more time. And I know, I know, it's it's just, it's not the point. And that's why I have a hard time being like, I wish it was longer, because that's not the point, Mackenzie. They're quick reads. Probably to get out of people out of reading slumps, but I, I will say, just be warned. Even though I like them, <laughs> my opinion is not always right. And yeah, like I said, there are a bunch of reviews that talk about the typos and stuff and the mistakes, and I will say that I do notice them. Um, I choose to ignore them because you know what? It's about vibes. <laughs> like, I'm not going to read novellas to put on my thinking cap and to be super, like, harsh and critical. Because that's just not, that's just, why? Why would I do that? So, yeah, I'm reading them for a good, fun time. Vibes only. 
Hi besties, what's up? Okay, I feel like I'm if I'm looking a little rough, it's because I feel a little rough, but we're we're gonna continue on. So, um, it is Wednesday, the tenth. It's Wednesday the tenth, and um, I guess I don't really have too many exciting things to tell you guys. I guess um, I downloaded the next book in the Aqua Corn, Aqua Corn, Aqua. Sure, Cove series. I started it last night. I read a chapter, nothing too big. And then I have been listening to Silver Flames. <sighs> Can I say something? I'm so peeved. I have avoided spoilers. I have avoided spoilers for the two Sarah J. Mass books I haven't read. <sighs> and I knew, I had an inkling that something was going to happen because of the reaction to the end of House of Sky and Breath that everybody was having and and like because of some of the TikToks I saw I, I thought that that might be it but I wanted to find out myself but I was in the bathroom at work and I I uh, sometimes take a couple minutes scroll through Instagram to de-stress because it was a lot today all right hi besties I Apologize, Stephen got home and um, I lost my train of thought, so I turned off the camera. But I believe I was talking about how I haven't been spoiled for any mass books. I kind of had like a theory that something was going to happen, but I didn't know for sure because I hadn't been spoiled. And then, lo and behold, I'm just absentmindedly scrolling on Instagram. Actually, I opened it to scroll and Miss Sarah Janet herself spoiled me. So, um, I know that's my fault, kind of, for being behind, but, like, if you follow Sarah J. Mass on Instagram in particular, be careful. Because, um, yeah, I feel like that was kind of a decent-sized spoiler. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> we have a package to open. Um, I just found out just five seconds ago that, um, I think I accidentally double ordered the same book from two different places. So, um, I'm probably going to return the Amazon one. I'm going to double check really quick because I, okay, I'll open the package and then, and then I'll explain what's going on. So, <laughs> why is there no pull tab on this? Surely there was probably an easier way to get this open, but why is there no pull tab on this? Rip off my address, I guess. Okay, dang it. Okay, so. Here's what happened, I think. So, this is Glint by Raven Kennedy. Um, I have Guild in this edition, and I wasn't going to start collecting the paperbacks because I felt like that would be silly. And I just, I really love these covers. They're super pretty. But, um, <laughs> I wanted to buy this in Gleam. And what I think happened was Gleam says it doesn't come out until, like, the 26th of March or May or something. And I'm like, well, Why? It's like literally out the other two books and they're five books, four books, five books out in the series so far. So I thought that it was Glint that it said wouldn't be here until then. And so I thought I canceled it on Amazon. I did not. Um, I did not. Um, so that's coming to me on Monday. So I think I'll just return that and, um, by Gleam on Thrift Books, like I did with this one. I'm so excited though because I do want to read this one super duper bad. I liked the first book a lot. So, dude, wait, does my does my copy of Guild look like this too? I didn't even look. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's pretty. Oh, I need to look at Guild now, but 
Yes. Maybe that's why. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they're reprinting them. I think they might have gotten picked up by a publisher, but it still doesn't make sense why the third one would be a pre-order and then the fourth and fifth one wouldn't be. So, I don't know. But, I think I'm actually going to read this in a couple weeks. I want to start it right now, but I really need to read some more Sarah Janet before I do that. Because I really need to catch up on those series. Because I do plan on reading A Court of Flame and Sh Shadow and Flame? A Court of Flame and Shadow? Yeah, I think it's Flame and Shadow. I plan on reading that as soon as it comes out. House of Flame and Shadow. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, my brain is all over the place. As you can tell, still battling whatever kind of sickness is going around. Um, I don't know if it's the same, like, literally everywhere, but where I am, every single person is sick, I feel like, for the most part. So, yeah. Oh, I need to make dinner, you guys, and I don't want to, but I really should right now, so I don't have to worry about it later. And I should find something to listen to. Because I do want to... I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Go to sleep, probably. I'm sorry, this was kind of a pointless update, to be honest. But it's fun nonetheless. So, yeah. I'm going to go. I'm probably going to finish watching Ashlyn's TBR video. And then I will go and make dinner so I don't have to mess with it in a little bit when I really don't want to do it. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm a mess. Excuse my red nose. I just blew it. I feel like um, I'm blowing everything right now, to be honest. My brain is kind of jumbled. We're restarting the clip that I just filmed. It was a wreck. So, first of all, I want to say anything that my husband says while he's playing Call of Duty I'm sorry, um, I can't control what comes out of his mouth, and he comes up with the darndest things sometimes. So if you hear him yelling behind me, no, he's not yelling at me. No, he is not calling me the B word, and no, he's not telling me that I suck. So just that I would throw that out there, just in case anybody hears it, but he's not talking to me. He's talking to the game. He has his headset on. He can't even hear me right now. In fact, I don't even think he hears half of the things that are coming out of his mouth, so I do want to, like that into the universe um eventually i'll stop saying that but that's fine let's talk about double breasted it follows willa dean who has recently gotten some really rough news at the beginning of the book and instead of staying in new york where she was living she decides to come back to capricorn cove and become a chicken farmer and raise chickens and Teresa, aka teddy which is what we know her by in the book who is the fire marshal and one day on actually the very first day on the farm for Willow Dean by herself there is a mysterious barn fire that happens and where Teddy is obviously the fire marshal um, she comes does an expense and she comes and does basically like an interview tries to figure out what happened is there a chance that, like, Willow Dean did it for some reason, for, like, money purposes? Obviously, she doesn't know, but Willow Dean is, like, literally a billionaire, so she wouldn't do it for money purposes. But, you know, obviously, we don't always know people's financial situations. So, um, it kind of goes from there. And I will say, for the majority of this book, I really, really liked it. I really did. However, um, <clears throat> as we get more into the book... There is something from Willow Dean's past that is affecting her present, if that makes sense. And because of this, um, she doesn't really let Teddy into her life the way Teddy wants to be let in, I guess. Um, and the thing that bothered me about it was that Teddy let this kind of stuff, like, fester for uh, three months. Three months. Um, they're in a committed, serious relationship with each other for three months, and Teddy doesn't even bother to bring it up, never brought it up, lets it fester, and one day she decides that basically she's going to go over and seduce the truth out of her, out of Willow Dean. And 
not only did that not even happen, which is ick within itself, and I really don't like that, but she also just kind of like attacks Willow Dean. Now, obviously, she doesn't know what happened in Willow Dean's past, and that's fine, but I just got the ick. I really got the ick. It was weird. Um, I just, I really, yeah, I didn't like that part. And then after that, it was just like, I don't know. I guess I can only read so many books where the main love interest calls the main heroine perfect <laughs> so many times. And like, I get it. You want to be perfect to your significant other, like in some aspect of the word, right? Like, would I say that Steven is perfect for me? Yes, I love Steven. I really do. But, like, I am not telling him that he's perfect every single day. So, I, I don't know. And it, it happens in, like, if not all of them, a majority of the books. And so that's why I'm mentioning it now. Um, which is probably the problem with literally binge reading Evie Mitchell's books. Um, I don't know how the rest of them are, but... I do know the other two that I've read. So let's talk about the next one. Next book. The next book in the series that I finished was As You Wish. And this book follows Yasmin and Caleb. And Caleb is Yasmin's brother's best friend. And she has had the world's biggest crush on him since she can remember. And plot twist, he's actually been in love with her too. Since they were teenagers. Which... Can I just say the amount of people that are apparently have been in love with each other since they were teenagers when they're literally now in their late 20s, early 30s in these books is just, I know, I know it's a book. So like that's why I don't want to say this, but like it's kind of unrealistic. Like you can't tell me you've been pining over this person that you haven't even seen or talked to for 10 years. 10 years plus maybe in some cases. Like it's kind of silly, but I think for this one it's more like realistic almost because obviously like Yasmin's brother's best friend is Caleb and Caleb has been in her life previous to this book and she's seen him so like yeah obviously we have sexual tension building even before this book but especially during this book but essentially um their relationship starts off because of Adair to play seven minutes in heaven and I really liked that that was super fun I really enjoyed it and I actually I did really enjoy Yasmin and Caleb's relationship I did I really liked Caleb as like the main love interest I will say like another thing with these books which obviously if I'm in the mood for it and like if you like this stuff I think you might like these books but I feel like a lot of these men are like alpha male like you have sex one time and all of a sudden she's yours type of deal like it just comes off kind of tacky and I feel bad saying that because I really did like As You Wish I thought it was really good it was also one of the longer books so I did really enjoy that too I I think it was one of the longer ones it was either this one that was longer or no no this one was not longer it was it was literally 75 pages okay sorry Okay, another thing that seems really nitpicky to me that I really shouldn't say, I don't think, but there are, how do I say this? How do I say this? Um, there are a lot of men in this series, or like at least two or three that I can think of, that aren't, that are virgins. And that's not the issue. The issue I have is with the realism that they've never even seen female genitalia and all of a sudden they can like make people do the big O twice within you know however long it takes like not very long though um when they know nothing and like I'm just gonna say this and it's not a dig but like I haven't talked to a single person granted my scope of people that I talk to about this stuff is very small anyways but like I have not ever once heard of a first time being quote unquote orgasm worthy. Again, nothing li like it takes time to learn what your partner likes, and that's not you know, that's not the issue. But I just 
don't find it believable that these men are sex gods when they haven't even seen a female genitalia at all, period. I just don't think it's realistic. I just don't believe that the big O can happen like the very first time you have relations with a person who doesn't know you, doesn't know your body, doesn't even really know the female genitalia. I'm sorry, I just don't really believe it. Like, just because you've had wet dreams about it doesn't mean that you know how it works. Like, and that may sound nitpicky, and you know what, I just don't even care at this point. That's, that's one thing that I cannot suspend my disbelief over. And right now you're like, Mackenzie, that's what's bothering you? Yes. I've literally read, like, at this point this is the 8th book in the series, I think? Or 7th, I mean? And I just, I giggle. I giggle. And the next one. Despite the very wintry vibes of the title, You Slay Me, it was not about Christmas, which I was actually kind of surprised by. I thought that it was going to be another Christmas one, but this book follows Farah and Wolf. I do, I do gotta say, I do like the name Wolf for our main character, especially where he's like famous. I don't know why. I think sometimes famous people have the dumbest names. I said what I said, but anyways, um, Wolf is a very famous singer and songwriter, and he basically became famous overnight for playing at a wedding event very last minute for not the famous person herself, but the famous person's sister, I believe. And so he basically blew up overnight and was able to get a record deal. And my camera is overheating so I will talk to you guys in a couple minutes when my camera has had time to cool down. I'm so sorry. One minute. Alrighty, I think we should be good now. I think we should be good. It's been a few minutes. <laughs> Anyways, it's talking about Farah and a wolf. Farah, not Farah. They sound kind of similar to me now that I'm saying it, but anyways. So, we open the book and Farah is going to a very important client meeting with one of the biggest donors of her animal sanctuary. And we essentially find out that this donor is pulling out. Because the original person that donated um, is no longer with us. So the next person in line has yoinked out, you know, everything. And so um, she runs into Wolf after they have like kind of like a steamy exchange at a Halloween party that we got to read about in As You Wish and I believe we got to hear about it in the other book, that, um, Double Breasted. We got to see little bits and pieces of it throughout the books and she's actually been in love with Wolf since high school again <laughs> and He basically takes her um, to a coffee shop and he helps her kind of figure out what to do from here. They decide to do a fundraiser. And in the middle of this, Wolf is realizing, because he is, because he's an artist, he writes all of his own music. However, he has basically been in a musical drought for the last little while and he hasn't been able to write any music. So basically he owes his label like the next big hit or else they're gonna bring ghostwriters in and while he's talking to Farah, he realizes that he's starting to get lyrics popping up in his head when he hasn't had that in a month a, like a year a year approximately so thus starts the relationship and I I really liked this one um again apparently he also had a crush on her and listen, I, I say this in the nicest way possible, too. First of all, I don't I don't really believe in le leagues, necessarily. Like, I don't think you can really be out of someone's league, necessarily. However, it does state in multiple places, I feel like, that um, she was way out of his league and that she can't believe that he would ever notice her. And apparently he did notice her and he was, like, in love with her. Uh, again, it just, the formulaicness of it all is obvious 
when you read all of the books back to back, which is what I've been doing. So that's obviously on me. And again, it's not that big of a deal. This was one of the longer books, though. It was over 100 pages. It was closer. It's either uh, it was in between 115 and 120, and I really liked it. I will say I liked how in this book there was like kind of more of a third act conflict than in most of the previous books. I I do like myself a third act conflict, and it seems like none of these books have really like had a third act conflict that have left our characters not talking for an undisclosed amount of time, or like or a disclosed amount of time, I guess. Um, I did really like it. I. I really liked it. I thought it was super good. I like how all the men are very, like, and women. Like, everybody is very, like, high on, um, or. <laughs> I hope you guys can hear that. That is hilarious. Okay, anyways. Um. I don't even remember what I was saying. Oh, I like how consent is a big thing in these books. Like, all of them. That is, like, a thing. Um, consent is a big thing for all of the characters in these books, and I really do like it. I really did like Slay Me. I do really like Evie's longer works, even though... And this book had a little bit more pining than all the rest of them do. Of course, if it's twice as long, it's going to have twice the pining, I guess, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, I guess just no going into these books what like have a realistic expectation of what you're gonna get out of them because they're short they're spicy they're fast-paced and um you don't get the pining and the just desperate need that like I really like personally so keep that in mind um but yeah other than that I'm having a great time with the series, I think I will probably continue on with them. I don't know if I'm going to be filming another vlog while I'm filming my Sarah J. Mass catch-up vlog. I'm excited nonetheless. I'm having a great time reading this year. Obviously, I've read a bunch of short books, and I do want to say that I'm not doing this just to, like, get ahead of my Goodreads goal. Because I, I mean, I failed it three times last year. Let's just be so real right now. I failed my Goodreads goal three times last year. I don't care about failing it. I really don't. So that is something I did want to mention is I'm not just reading these books because I want to get ahead of my Goodreads goal. I'm not trying to cheat. I know that some people are weird about that stuff. Um, I'm reading what I want to read right now and I'm reading what I'm enjoying reading and if it's a bunch of little short novellas I don't think there's anything wrong with what you read or how you read it and Like I said, I just, I don't see anything wrong with it. If you do, kindly leave. Um, here, no matter what you read, it is considered reading, including audiobooks. So, if you don't like that, you can leave. But, yeah, I do, I do like all the books that I've read so far this year. Obviously, all eight of them have been in the same series. But, hey, at least I'm, like, literally binge reading the series. And now all I have is books 9, 10, and 11. And then I'm done with the series. And... I've read the whole series, so um, uh, it's going to be interesting to see after I'm done with the Capricorn Cove series, though, if I'm going to want to read more, because I, I think I will. I have Not My Type on my Kindle, and then I have a few of her other books, I believe, so we'll see if I get into those, but I think I need to slow my roll a little bit, because even though, like, because of how short Evie's books are, they aren't, like, too expensive, but, like... You know, I, I need to slow my roll. We've been doing really good on spending the past few months, so I, th I think we just need to keep that mindset up, if you know what I mean, because, yeah, we're, we're, we're having a kid. <laughs> like, kids are expensive, and uh, we need to do the best that we can right now, because when I'm out of work for a couple months, we'll see. We'll see, but, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy with my reading so far this year. I think it's great. Hi besties, what's up? So if I look a little rough in this clip, it's because this is kind of an impromptu clip, I guess. But I decided while I was editing my vlog that I'm uh, going to try to post today 
we'll see how that goes. It's already 10 o'clock, but I decided I want to jump on here and just like round out the Capricorn Cove series because I have finished it. I think I maybe finished it the day after I finished this vlog or a couple days later, but where this vlog is going out so much later than when I started it, I figured I would just jump on here and round everything out. So there are technically 11 books in the series, but I have no idea how to get the 11th book or where to get it. If it's a pre-order, I can't find it anywhere. So we're only going to be talking about books 9 and 10 now. Because I do believe that I talked about book 8 earlier in the vlog. So number 9 is Me Load. And this book I had hella high hopes for. I'm not going to lie. Like I was very, very excited to read this particular book. I thought it was going to be phenomenal. And it kind of like let me down just a teeny tiny bit. So this book follows Hannah and Malik. And Malik is Yasmin's brother, I think. Listen, everybody's connected. I don't remember how they're all connected. I apologize. I'm kind of a wreck. My brain is just not all here right now. But... Basically, Malik has had a crush on Hannah probably the whole book series. So not like the other ones where he's been in love with her since high school. Um, and Hannah has had a really rough life. So she kind of has issues with like physical intimacy and stuff. And basically what forces them together is there's this thing called meat therapy. I think is what it's called. And yeah. It's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. And I think, yeah, I was just very, like, underwhelmed by this one. This one was the one I was most excited to read because I wanted to read Hannah's book. Since the whole series, she's kind of been, like, painted out to be, like, the antagonist, almost, of this whole town, I was excited to see her get a redemption. And I'm not saying she didn't get one because I think she did, but, like, their relationship was just kind of underwhelming, to be honest, and it was kind of weird. I don't know. It, yeah, the longer I've been away from it, the more of, like, kind of an ick it gives me. It's fine. But then I read <laughs> Resolution Revolution, and you know what? I really did not like this. So the first thing I do want to mention is it is some of the things that happen in Meat Load are verbatim copied and pasted into Resolution Revolution. And I didn't like that. Like, I was like, okay, maybe if this were a couple books down the line, it would be fine. But it's literally, like, a copy and paste of a couple chapters. So much so that I skipped the chapters that were copied and pasted. And it was, it was rough. Like, I did not, I did not like this one. So... It follows our main character, Karen. She is a radio talk show host with Hannah. So they're close friends. And the thing that brings her and Will, who's the love interest in this book together, is basically going on like this huge mountain hike. And I... This is arguably... Besides Hannah's book, because I think Hannah's book needed to be a lot longer. I don't remember how much each of these books were, but they both needed to be full-length novels. They both needed to. With all of Hannah's trauma, and then Karen with, like, well, Will. Will's situation. Will has six kids in this book. And I just feel like their whole relationship was completely rushed, considering that he has six kids, and... I don't know what the technical time span of the whole book was, but it wasn't that long. Long enough to feel comfortable, like, introducing your six kids to a woman that you seemingly just met and, like, fell instantly in love with. And, um, this book also had, if you don't want any spoilers, skip, like, 
30, 45 seconds. It had the accidental print. It had the accidental pregnancy trope. And I'm sorry, like, I can get behind an accidental pregnancy trope. I can. I really liked the one in L. Kennedy series that she did, but you can't do that in an 80 page novella. I'm sorry, you just cannot do the accidental pregnancy trope at the very end of the book. Um, it just was a cop out. It was, yeah. And I think that because of that, it rushed their relationship on, like, faster than it needed to go. I know that Will said that he wanted to, like, propose to her before all this happened. But, like, I don't know. I kind of saw this coming from a mile away. And the thing that sucks about this is that Will's first relationship, first marriage that he was in, actually... He got married because of an accidental pregnancy. So I just think, yeah, I, d I didn't like it. I really didn't like this. Like, the two last books in the series would probably be my lowest rated books. And I know that in previous clips I was saying, it's not the point, Mackenzie, for them to be longer. No, these books both needed to be longer because of the content in them. I will die on this hill. They both needed to be full length novels. They did. You cannot bring a woman into your kids' life that you honestly barely even know. You can't do that. And then with all of Hannah's trauma, like, and all of the kind of weird stuff that she had going on, um, yeah. I feel icky about it. But that's all I have to say about that. That is, like, the most disappointing ending to a vlog I can think of, to be honest. And I apologize for this somber update. But, yeah. I, if I do buy any of the books, I will be buying the Mrs. Claus bind-up that has that one and New Year, New You. I don't think I'm interested in owning the rest of them anymore. Mostly because the bind-ups either have like one book that I really liked and one book that I was mad about and then yeah obviously the last two books I don't want to own at all so I'm kind of bummed about it but yeah I don't know if I'm gonna even read the 11th book but yeah. anyways other than that I will let you guys finish watching the video thank you guys for making it this far if you have like I don't know how you did Okay, anyways, bye. So, anyways, um, I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, you should leave a like on the video if you liked it. If you like to see my face, um, I do want to apologize that there weren't, like, very many, um, there weren't any. There weren't any, like, breaks with just, like, music playing in the background. I'm sorry about that. I wish there was. Um, I'm just trying to find my rhythm with vlogging. And I'm trying to not be myself up too much with it. I just, yeah. That's just what I'm trying to do, I guess. But I am, I'm having a lot of fun. So, I hope you guys are too. Uh, like I said, like the video if you would like to. And subscribe if you want to. And while you're hitting the subscribe button, you could think about hitting the notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. And with all that being said, Thank you guys again so much for watching the video and I will talk to y'all in my next video. Bye everyone. When you're not here, the sun don't shine. When you're not near, I don't feel 